Welcome to True Crime Case Files, the podcast that delves into the darkest corners of human nature. In today's episode, we uncover the chilling tale of a twisted love triangle that ended in tragedy. Join us as we explore the shocking events surrounding the murder of Bella Sanderson, a vivacious boutique owner caught in a deadly game between her husband's lover and her own mother-in-law. Isabella Bella Sanderson, a vibrant and ambitious 30-year-old woman, owned a small clothing boutique in the city of Pittsburgh, California back in June of 2004. Her boutique, known simply as Bella's Boutique, was a hidden gem in the local fashion scene. With an impeccable taste for fashion and a fierce sense of independence, Bella became a fascinating figure in the community. As the summer of 2004 unfolded, Bella's life was filled with dreams and aspirations. She constantly envisioned a future brimming with success and adventure. Despite being four months pregnant, she remained determined to make her boutique thrive. Friends and family admired her unapologetic confidence, but little did they know that it would eventually lead to her untimely demise. To complicate matters further, Bella's own mother-in-law, Sophia, harbored a deep resentment towards her. Sophia, a woman known for her controlling nature, couldn't stand Bella's independent spirit. She saw her as a threat to the family's legacy and was determined to eliminate her from their lives. On that fateful night in June, Bella's life took a tragic turn. The details surrounding her murder were as chilling as they are perplexing. The investigation into her death would uncover a series of shocking revelations, shedding light on the dark secrets that lay beneath the surface of this seemingly idyllic suburban community. In the quiet neighborhood of Pittsburgh, California, tragedy struck on a sunny day in June. Isabella Bella Sanderson, a vivacious 30-year-old boutique owner, met a gruesome end that would send shockwaves through the community. Bella was known for her impeccable taste and fierce independence. Her small clothing boutique was a local favorite, attracting fashion enthusiasts from all walks of life. She had a reputation for stirring up drama, with her unapologetic confidence and ambitious dreams of success and adventure. At the time of her death, Bella was four months pregnant, adding an even more heartbreaking layer to the already devastating story. On that fateful day, Bella's husband, Robert Sanderson Jr., made a horrifying discovery. The warmth of the sun was in stark contrast to the chilling scene that awaited him. As he approached his middle-class residence, fear and confusion washed over him. He stumbled upon the lifeless body of his beloved wife, her once vibrant spirit extinguished. The shock of the discovery was palpable. Robert, overwhelmed by grief, was unsure of how to process the gruesome scene before him. The police were immediately called to the scene, and the investigation into Bella's death began. In June of 2004, media outlets were quick to pick up on the tragedy. Local newspapers, such as the Pittsburgh Gazette, dedicated coverage to the case. Television news stations, like KGO Channel 7 News, aired special reports detailing the events surrounding Bella's murder. The community was captivated by the unfolding story, desperate for answers and justice. As investigators combed through the evidence, they discovered a complex web of relationships that would become the focal point of their investigation. The love triangle between Bella, her husband Robert, and his secret lover quickly became a central piece of the puzzle. The tension between these individuals, combined with the involvement of Bella's own mother-in-law, added an even darker twist to the already tragic tale. With each passing day, the details of Bella's untimely demise became more and more publicized. The community mourned the loss of a vibrant young woman, while simultaneously grappling with the shocking and disturbing nature of the crime. The investigation continued, fueled by the determination to bring justice to Bella and her unborn child. The swift arrival of the police at the scene of Bella Sanderson's tragic demise in June 2004 sent shockwaves through the quiet, middle-class neighborhood of Pittsburgh, California. Detective Johnson and Officer Ramirez, the dedicated investigators assigned to the case, wasted no time in assessing the chilling crime scene. As they approached the serene surroundings where Bella's lifeless body lay, a sense of urgency filled the air. The investigators were met with a gruesome sight. Traces of blood stained the once peaceful neighborhood, serving as a stark reminder of the violence that had unfolded. The method of murder, two gunshot wounds to the chest, added an eerie layer of mystery to the already perplexing case. With a meticulous attention to detail, 
the police meticulously combed the area for any potential clues. Utilizing advanced forensic techniques, they gathered evidence that would prove crucial in piecing together the puzzle of Bella's untimely demise. Every inch of the crime scene was scrutinized, from the surrounding houses and streets to the smallest fragments of evidence. Local residents were interviewed, their statements providing valuable insights into the events leading up to Bella's tragic end. The investigators delved into Bella's personal life, exploring her relationships and potential motives for her murder. Rumors of a love triangle involving Bella's husband and her own mother-in-law began to circulate, adding a layer of complexity to the case. As the investigation progressed, the media frenzy surrounding the case intensified. News outlets across picked up the story, captivated by the twists and turns of this real-life tragedy. The small clothing boutique owned by Bella became a focal point, with reporters flocking to the scene to capture the essence of the vibrant woman whose life had been cut short. In their pursuit of justice, Detective Johnson and Officer Ramirez left no stone unturned. They consulted experts in ballistics, forensics, and psychology, hoping to gain further insights into the mind of the killer. The search for answers became a race against time, as the public demanded answers and Bella's loved ones sought closure. The initial focus of the investigation turned towards Robert Sanderson Jr., the husband of the late Bella Sanderson. Robert, a charming and influential figure in the community, was the owner of a local bike shop that had gained popularity among cycling enthusiasts in Contra Costa County. As the police delved deeper into the case, they sought to unravel the enigma surrounding Robert's potential involvement in the murder of his wife. Detective Johnson and Officer Ramirez, the dedicated investigators assigned to the case, meticulously interrogated Robert. The room was tense, with the air heavy with anticipation as they probed for any signs of deceit or motive. Robert's demeanor fluctuated throughout the questioning, displaying a range of emotions that left the investigators both intrigued and suspicious. During the intense interrogation, Robert's responses were a mix of anger and calmness, further adding to the complexity of the case. The investigators were aware of his reputation for manipulation, and they were determined to uncover any hidden truths that lay beneath his charismatic facade. They delved into his personal life, exploring his relationship with Bella and any potential motives that could have driven him to commit such a heinous act. As the investigation progressed, the police discovered a series of text messages exchanged between Robert and a mysterious individual known only as MC. The messages hinted at a clandestine affair, raising questions about the nature of Robert's relationship with Marco Castrati, a regular at the bike shop. Marco, a prominent figure in the community and the owner of a renowned Italian restaurant, had been a big investor in Robert Jr.'s bike shop. With each passing day, the investigators grew more determined to crack the case wide open, bringing justice to the memory of Bella Sanderson. The small community of Pittsburgh was left reeling from the shocking events that had unfolded within its peaceful confines. As the investigation continued, the police painstakingly gathered evidence, leaving no stone unturned in their pursuit of the truth. Sophia Sanderson, age 65, the mother of Robert Jr., became the focus of the investigation as the second suspect in the murder of Bella Sanderson. A woman of refined taste and extravagant lifestyle, Sophia was no stranger to the glitz and glamour of the luxurious life. However, beneath her polished exterior lay a web of secrets and hidden motives. As the police delved into Sophia's connections to the crime, they discovered a tangled web of financial strain. Despite her outward appearance of wealth and luxury and her pension as a retired nurse, Sophia was burdened by a mountain of credit card debt. Her extravagant spending habits had caught up with her and she found herself in a desperate situation. It was during this time of financial turmoil that Bella's murder occurred. The police began to question whether Sophia's mounting debt had driven her to commit such a heinous act. They meticulously combed through her financial records, searching for any evidence that could link her to the crime. As they dug deeper, the investigators uncovered a series of suspicious transactions in the weeks leading up to the murder. Large sums of money had been withdrawn from Sophia's bank account, with no clear explanation as to where the funds had gone. The police traced these transactions to a secret offshore account, raising even more questions about Sophia's involvement in Bella's death. The investigation took a dramatic turn when the police discovered a hidden compartment in Sophia's closet. Inside, 
they found a collection of newspaper clippings detailing the scandalous affairs of wealthy individuals in the area. These clippings, meticulously organized and annotated, hinted at a secret side to Sophia's already dark life. The police theorized that Sophia had become obsessed with the lives of the rich and famous, using their scandals and misfortunes as inspiration for her own twisted game. They believed that Bella's murder was not only a means to protect her family's reputation, but also a way for Sophia to live out her own twisted fantasies. As the investigation continued, the police dug deeper into Sophia's past, uncovering a trail of deceit and manipulation. They discovered that she had a history of using her charm and cunning to manipulate those around her, bending them to her will. This revelation only fueled their suspicions of her involvement in Bella's murder. In the coming weeks, the police would delve further into Sophia's connections and unravel the truth behind Bella's tragic death, riding hard on the shocking twists and turns of the investigation. As the investigation into the tragic murder of Isabella, Bella, Sanderson intensified, the authorities meticulously combed through the evidence, determined to uncover the truth behind this heinous crime. Every detail, no matter how seemingly insignificant, was scrutinized in their pursuit of justice. One crucial piece of evidence that emerged was the discovery of two tickets to a matinee showing of the renowned musical Cats. These tickets, bearing the names of Bella's husband, Robert Sanderson Jr., and a man known as Diego, were found at the crime scene. The investigators immediately recognized the significance of this find, as it provided a potential lead in their quest to unravel the mystery surrounding Bella's untimely demise. The date on the tickets indicated that the fateful outing was planned for June of 2004. As the investigators delved deeper into the connection between Robert Jr. and Diego, they discovered that Diego was the older brother of Bella. This revelation added a new layer of complexity to the case, raising questions about the nature of their relationship and the potential motives behind Bella's murder. Furthermore, the investigators meticulously examined the theater where the Cats' performance was scheduled to take place. The historic Fox Theater in downtown Oakland, known for its stunning architecture and grandeur, had been the chosen venue for this particular matinee. The theater's management cooperated fully with the authorities, providing access to surveillance footage and assisting in the identification of potential witnesses. As the authorities worked tirelessly to piece together the puzzle surrounding Bella's murder, they remained steadfast in their commitment to uncover the truth. The discovery of the cat's tickets had opened up a new avenue of investigation, shedding light on the intricate web of relationships and potential motives that surrounded this chilling crime. Diego Bosque, the older brother of Bella Sanderson, emerged as another suspect in the investigation. Diego, known for his fiery temper and unwavering loyalty, held deep suspicions about Bella's marriage to Robert Jr. and harbored a strong disdain for Sophia. However, the police uncovered shocking evidence that would send shockwaves through the community. During the course of their investigation, the police discovered secret, explicit text messages exchanged between Diego and Robert Sanderson Jr., Bella's husband. These messages revealed a clandestine sexual relationship between the two men, a relationship that had been kept hidden from everyone including Bella. The messages were very graphic in nature and described late-night rendezvous in various parks around Contra Costa County. The revelation of this secret relationship sent shockwaves through the community as it challenged the perception of loyalty and betrayal. Friends and family members were left dumbfounded, struggling to reconcile the image they had of Diego and Robert Jr. with the shocking reality that had been uncovered. The local media quickly picked up on the story with headlines screaming about the scandalous affair that had emerged in the midst of Bella's murder investigation. The police, now faced with the task of unraveling the complex web of relationships surrounding Bella's death, intensified their interrogation of Diego. The third-grade vocabulary level was employed, ensuring that the questions were easily understood by all parties involved. Diego, torn between protecting his sister's memory and his own lover, was visibly shaken during the questioning. His anger and desperation were palpable as he attempted to navigate the treacherous waters of the investigation. As the investigation continued, the police delved deeper into the connection between Diego and Robert. They analyzed phone records, cross-referenced text messages, and interviewed acquaintances who might shed light on the nature of their relationship. The evidence was meticulously gathered, ensuring that no stone was left unturned in the pursuit of justice. 
The community of Pittsburgh, California, was left reeling from the shocking revelations that had come to light. The murder of Bella Sanderson had not only exposed a twisted love triangle, but had also shattered the illusion of a close-knit community. The once peaceful neighborhood now found itself at the center of a media frenzy, with reporters from local news outlets descending upon the area to cover the sensational story. The shocking truth behind Bella Sanderson's murder in June of 2004 was finally revealed, shedding light on a twisted plot that unfolded in the quiet city of Pittsburgh, California. After months of meticulous investigation, the police unraveled an intricate web of deception, leading to the arrest of Sophia Sanderson, the 65-year-old mother-in-law of the victim. Driven by a toxic combination of jealousy and pride, Sophia orchestrated a cunning plan to eliminate both her son's lover and his sister, her daughter-in-law. The motive behind this heinous act was rooted in Sophia's deep resentment towards Bella's intrusion into her family's affairs and her son's illicit sexual relationship with Diego Bosque, Bella's older brother. Sophia's desire to maintain control over her son, Robert Jr., and safeguard her family's reputation played a pivotal role in her decision to carry out this macabre scheme. With Diego stealing away her son for secret sex and Bella's pregnancy, threatening her son's financial support, Sophia saw no other way to protect her carefully constructed facade. The police uncovered a trail of evidence that pointed directly at Sophia's involvement in the murder. The discovery of a meticulously planned alibi, consisting of a fake doctor's appointment and a series of phone calls to create a false timeline, revealed the calculated nature of her actions. Additionally, surveillance footage from a nearby store captured Sophia purchasing a gun, the same weapon used to end Bella's life. As the authorities closed in on Sophia, her carefully constructed facade crumbled before her eyes. The shock and disbelief on her face as she was arrested mirrored the feelings of the community, who had known her as a respected member of society. As the community of Pittsburgh tries to make sense of this tragic event, the memory of Bella Sanderson will forever be etched in their minds. Her vibrant spirit and ambitious dreams will serve as a reminder of the fragility of life and the darkness that can lurk within the hearts of those closest to us. The courtroom was abuzz with anticipation as the trial of Sophia Sanderson, accused of orchestrating the murder of her son's lover and wife, reached its climax. District Attorney Tabitha Quasimodo, with her commanding presence and sharp legal mind, led the prosecution's case against Sophia. The defense, represented by attorney Ariel Cruz Roja, fought tirelessly to cast doubt on the evidence presented. The trial unfolded against the backdrop of a nation captivated by true crime stories. In the courtroom, attorney Quasimodo meticulously laid out the evidence against Sophia. She presented phone records showing suspicious conversations between Sophia and an unidentified individual on the day of the murder. The prosecution also introduced the murder weapon, a .45 caliber handgun, which was traced back to Sophia's possession. The ballistics expert testified that the bullets recovered from Bella's body matched those fired from the gun. To further strengthen their case, the prosecution called upon witnesses who had observed Sophia's erratic behavior leading up to the murder. A neighbor testified that they had seen Sophia lurking around Bella's boutique, casting a sinister shadow over the otherwise peaceful neighborhood. The defense, however, argued that these witnesses were unreliable and their testimonies should be dismissed. As the trial progressed, the courtroom was filled with tension and emotion. Bella's grieving family, clad in black, listened intently to every word uttered. The victim's friends, still grappling with the shock of their loss, sought solace in each other's presence. The media, hungry for sensational stories, swarmed the courthouse, capturing every moment for the evening news and front-page headlines. After weeks of testimony and deliberation, the jury reached a verdict. Sophia Sanderson was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The courtroom erupted in a mix of relief, sorrow, and closure. The impact of the verdict reverberated through the lives of all involved, forever altering the course of their futures. In the aftermath of the trial, true crime geeks debated the motives and psychology of Sophia, dissecting her actions and attempting to understand what drove her to commit such a heinous crime. The story of Bella Sanderson's murder became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath even the most seemingly idyllic lives. Following the conclusion of the trial, Robert Jr., 
Diego, and Sofia were left to grapple with the daunting task of moving forward. The events surrounding Bella's murder had forever altered their lives, leaving them to navigate a complex web of emotions and rebuild their shattered worlds. Robert Jr., once the charismatic owner of a bike shop, found himself at a crossroads. The trial had exposed the dark secrets of his past, including his illicit relationship with Diego. The revelation had left him questioning his own sexuality and struggling to come to terms with the consequences of his actions. With his reputation tarnished and his business suffering, Robert Jr. faced an uphill battle to regain the trust of his community. Diego, Bella's older brother, was consumed by guilt and remorse. His secret sexuality relationship with Robert had not only betrayed his sister, but also implicated him in the murder plot. The trial had laid bare his darkest secrets, leaving him isolated and ostracized from his family, who did not accept his sexuality. With no one to turn to, Diego found solace in therapy and support groups, working tirelessly to rebuild his life and find redemption. Sophia, the mastermind behind the murder plot, faced the harsh reality of her actions. The trial had shattered her carefully constructed facade, exposing her as a manipulative and calculating individual. Her once extravagant lifestyle had crumbled under the weight of her debt, leaving her in prison. With no one left to protect her, Sophia retreated into a life of isolation and regret. As the months turned into years, the wounds left by Bella's murder slowly began to heal. The victims' families, torn apart by grief, found solace in support groups and counseling. The community rallied around them, offering a shoulder to lean on and a listening ear. Slowly but surely, life in Pittsburgh returned to a semblance of normalcy. And thus, the twisted love triangle that ensnared Isabella, Bella, Sanderson came to a close. In the city of Pittsburgh, California, in June of 2004, a story of passion, betrayal, and tragedy unfolded. Bella's life was tragically cut short, leaving behind a community forever changed by the darkness that lurked within their midst. Join us next time on True Crime Case Files as we delve into another chilling tale of human nature's darkest depths. Hey, true crime case solvers, interested in more real-life murder mysteries? Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And do you have any thoughts about this case or have a case of your own you'd like us to investigate? Leave us a comment. Until then, stay safe, true crime case solvers.